In the headlines, Bailey Bridge costing $3.4 million being erected in Water Waven, Trafalgar. Prime Minister Skerritt pledges support for Trinidad and Tobago and Heritage Day 2018 shines light on Portsmouth. Hello and welcome to National Focus, I'm Priska Julian. Stay tuned for details of the headline stories and others coming up. Welcome back. Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has pledged solidarity with Trinidad and Tobago in the face of natural disaster affecting the entire nation. Over the past few days, an intense intertropical convergence zone has caused torrential rains resulting in severe flooding and landslides in Trinidad and Tobago. The Intel Tropical Convergence Zone, or ICTZ, is a belt of low pressure which circles the Earth generally near the equator where the trade winds of the northern and southern hemispheres come together. It is characterized by convective activity which generates often vigorous thunderstorms over large areas. It is most active over continental land masses by day and relative less active over the oceans. From last Friday and ongoing, the entire country of Trinidad has felt effects of this weather system, mainly in the central and eastern parts of the island, leaving much damage to property. Dominica's Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has articulated that Dominica is willing to assist in whatever way possible Trinidad needs. I wish on behalf of the people and government of Dominica extend uh, my solidarity to the the Prime Minister, the government and people of Trinidad and Tobago who have been who have been enduring for the last several days uh, massive flooding, uh, flooding of unprecedented uh, proportion. I, I have been in touch with the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago to get a sense of the situation and I also have been following through the news medium of the situation in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, it appears that they have suffered tremendously through flooding and uh, we are here to support and to provide whatever assistance we, in a humble way we can. Honorable Skerritt hopes for divine help for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. We continue to pray that uh, the rain will cease and uh, that the, the situation will be brought under control and our brothers and sisters in Trinidad and Tobago can, can go about their, their, their lives in a normal way. But it's a uh, it's a real, it's a real concern. Also, this news time, the tourism hub of Dominica, the Rosa Valley, has seen numerous infrastructural developments over the past few weeks. Due to the passage of Hurricane Maria, the bridge connecting Watson Waven to Trafalgar was severely damaged. Government has committed $3.4 million for the placement of a Bailey Bridge in that area. Work has been progressing smoothly, and if all goes as planned, work on this bridge should be completed. In November. We are building the abutments as you can see right now, both on the um, the northern the, 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 the southern end of the bridge as well as the um, northern end of the bridge behind me. And then the, the plan here is to build a sort of a concrete connection between the two abutments or the two columns if you want to call it that, so that you can really connect this bridge to prevent further erosion taking place beneath in the um, in the in the water stream there. The Honourable Member of Parliament says government has a keen interest in the development of the communities of the Rosa Valley. He revealed that government acquired 19 acres of land in close proximity to the Bailey Bridge for these reasons. We have acquired this land for three reasons, geothermal expansion, tourism expansion and building of a facility for the people. And we are in the design phase of it, actually saw the designs yesterday, we have sent it back to the the designers, the architects to redesign it, you know, put in more of a sort of eco feel onto it. It's a very nice design, but I thought what lends well to the Rose Valley is a particular type of eco 
tourism facility. So once we have this all placed up lovely, there'll be the vending stalls, there'll be, we look at a little restaurant area, toilets, hot springs, and really have a lovely development taking place there. And the third one was for the realignment of this road. As I mentioned to you, the road is slipping away on the top aspect of it there. So we needed extra land. So right be behind me, if you were to look at that side here, we'll be cutting through that and realigning the existing road to go away from the, the, the crack that's taking place there, such that we have a lovely bridge, um, Billy Bridge being placed here. The Rosa Valley is well known for its natural attractions, such as hot sulfur springs and waterfalls. This part of the island has contributed tremendously to Dominica's economy since most of the tourism activities takes place in these communities. Meantime, government continues to demonstrate its commitment to making life better for citizens. This is evident in the Rosa Valley constituency where numerous road rehabilitation projects are being undertaken to improve the road network in that constituency. A $3.8 million rehabilitation project for roads in Mount Prosper improve access to that part of the island. 600 meters of road is being rehabilitated in L'Escalier, Mount Prosper. This is the only entrance into Mount Prosper, the only road into Mount Prosper. After Hurricane Maria, seriously impacted. Very, very little road left in terms of a rigid surface, so we had to decide to get into here. Otherwise, this, this, uh, the, the, this Mount Prosper would be like an island in Dominica, where it's cut off from the rest of Dominica, or of course, surrounded by land in this case, not water. So we have decided to um, come in here as a government, and the, 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 the um, project has been implemented by um, off, offshore civil marine, costing about 3.8, point as we said, 600 meters of road involve a number of the different aspects of shelving, trying to get onto the base here and creating a proper road. The Honourable Member of Parliament says Mount Prosper has been one of the communities involved in the production of fresh vegetables. He says this project will make access to the Rosa Market more comfortable for the farmers of that area. The government of Dominica stands firm with them in terms of building the necessary roadways for them in this project such that they can take their produce down to the Rosa Market and they can have some good um, investments coming from it. Offshore Civil and Marine is contracted to carry out this project. Project engineer at Offshore Civil and Marine, Joseph Flozak, revealed that the project will be completed in six months if the weather permits. He gave details about the project. Basically, it's to improve the road in terms of its safety. And for that, we needed to widen the road and to do a lot of benching uh, because of the the embankment. So on one side of the existing road we have a serious embankment and on the other side we have a valley. And that's not good for, for the traveling public. So in a sense we are following the design of the Ministry of Public Works which is to shelve the area and to have a road complete with guardrails, drainage, uh, the full works when we are finished. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Welcome back. The Ministry of Education has received school supplies thanks to Halima's helping hands. A handing over ceremony took place at the Ministry of Finance conference room on Monday. Three pallets packed with supplies will be shared among 17 primary schools. Schools will receive notebooks, pens, pencils, copybooks, workbooks, erasers, school bags, crayons and more. 17 primary schools and one secondary school in Dominica have been selected based on need to receive assistance from the Halimers Helping Hands Foundation, an NGO foundation in Trinidad and Tobago, as part of Hurricane Relief for Maria. Names of the schools are San Sauve, Castle Bruce, La Plain, St. Joseph, Salisbury, Salabia, Girodel, Portsmouth, Grand Four, Sinicu, Marigot, Maho, Pioneer Prep, Daly, Simon John, and the Orion Secondary. Representative of Halima's Helping Hands, Sharaz Ali, says the organization is pleased to make this donation to the Ministry of Education post Hurricane Maria. He gave brief details about the organization. 
We are a child-oriented organization and a registered NGO with a committed mandate to provide school books, stationery, uniforms, eyeglasses, monthly food hampers, and dental and social assistance to struggling families were requested. Halima's Helping Hands was founded in 2014 in memory of young Halima Aisha Mohammed, an 11-year-old child who succumbed to illness and passed away mere weeks before the SEA, or secondary entrance examination. Her parents, Hisham and Hajra Mohammed, turned their grief into a cause that would represent caring the caring and helpful Halima. Ali commended the ministry for the work they have been doing in ensuring that all students are back at school for the 2018-2019 school year, notwithstanding the difficulties posed by Hurricane Maria last year. One year after the hurricane, notwithstanding the difficult and costly challenges you encountered to rehabilitate your schools, the inconvenience you encountered when using your schools as emergency shelters, the impediments you experienced by the displacement of many of your students, hundreds even having to migrate for a while, you have endured the worst. Yet today, you have reopened all your schools. What an achievement. You weathered catastrophic hurricanes like David in 1979 and Maria last year, and still rebounded with unshakable determination. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Chandler Hyacinth, represented the Honorable Minister for Education, Peter Sejan. She thanked Halima's Helping Hands for this donation. This particular contribution from Halima's Helping Hands is significant. In particular, we very much appreciate the effort that was made to have this donation to Dominica. Um, we know that it's always a struggle to get things okay. into Dominica mm -hmm. and, and the cost involved because we two of ourselves are involved in bringing in things and seeing the cost too as well. So we appreciate the effort. We want you to carry back to your organization our deepest, deepest um, gratitude for this contribution. We recognize that it will assist with the enhancing the learning environment in our schools. Your, your, sub, your donation of supplies is timely. In particular, as the minister said, we were targeting the areas that were hardest hit by the hurricane, the East schools in particular. She assured that the learning materials will be put to good use both by the teachers and students of the school receiving the supplies. Finally, Heritage Day 2018 on Sunday was hosted by the town of Portsmouth, Traditionally, Heritage Day symbolizes the start of the annual Creole Week Sime Creole celebrations in Dominica. Every year, different communities chosen for hosting the event where the unique history of that community is highlighted and patrons from that area are also honored for their achievements and contributions to the preservation of Dominica's rich culture and history. It also allows for focus on the traditions of that particular village. It's from the homily of Father Elvio this morning to the exhibition. When I look back and we roll back the years and the history of Portsmouth and in general of Dominica, and we see where we have come from and where we are today, we can in fact say that we have been a resilient people right from the start. Our history, our culture, and our heritage tells a story about resilience. For the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Portsmouth constituency, Ian Douglas, the town of Portsmouth is one that has always shown to be a resilient one, a trait that can be recognized if one were to trace back in history. He says Portsmouth will continue in its legacy of being an integral contributor for building Dominica. One of the most resilient places in Dominica, the town of Portsmouth, the first place where the Caribs landed, and they called the Portsmouth Anichi. And then later on, we built up this town, the first town of Portsmouth. And had it not been for the swamps, the French and the British made Portsmouth 
especially Fort Shirley, through Fort Shirley, the first town of Dominica, the Cabrits. And we will, as we have done then, we will continue to contribute to the future and further development of Dominica. The event was attended by the President, His Excellency Charles Savre and Mrs. Savre and members of Cabinet. This year, the individual honored as cultural elder was Crawford Alexis of Portsmouth. He was searched by His Excellency, President Savre. This Heritage Day, Mr. Crawford has been selected as a cultural elder of the town of Portsmouth. He has made Portsmouth his home for many years. He has raised a family here in Portsmouth and has served diligently in a cultural capacity for the town and the neighboring villages throughout the years. The distinguished accordionist would be a fitting alias for Mr. Crawford Alexis. He taught himself to play the accordion after having found and fell in love with his father's old accordion. Mr. Crawford has emerged as one of the most prolific players of the traditional accordion instrument in Dominica. Alexis, who has played the accordion for over 65 years, has used his skills for the preservation of Dominica's culture, passing on the skills to a number of young persons. Many of his past students are now involved in local cultural groups. In collaboration with the Division of Culture, Mr. Alexis has taught several young people from Capuchin, Portsmouth, Penville, Pebush, Vekas, Point Michel, Calibishi, Kulibistri, Woodford Hill, Maho, and Koliho to play the accordion, his instrument of choice. Today, some of his past students, like Mikhail Ferrol of Pebush and Mikhail Matthew of Capuchin, are complimenting Mr. Crawford for his hard work, as they themselves are now promoting the accordion art form in the United States and other parts of the world. Alexis is also the recipient of a Golden Drum Awards and other recognition awards. And that's the English segment of the news. We now join Shakira Peer for Creole Highlights. <laughs> Bienvenue à ce nouvel accueil, non, moi c'est Shakira Peer. Premier ministre, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, qui a deux bouts en solidarité et puis Trinidad et puis Tobago, en tala la yoka expérience et désastre naturel qui a affecté le pays là. Un jour qui passe, Trinidad et puis Tobago a tapé un pile la pli et puis il a fait gros once with un caïmoun, dommage bagaïmoun et puis fait un low wafalma. Honorable Scary, the dumb live with the Trinidad de Pitubego and Nepot Manier is a way to Premier Minister D, he can parle and the Premier Minister Trinidad de Pitubego put up the information on what he has done in the country. Honorable Scary, the reason for what he has done is the change of climatic and this is a problem that has affected the country in the Caraibes. And even this day, the Trinidad de Pitubego has affected the country in the Caraibes. At that novel, the government has made a commitment to rehabilitate the Providence and Loda. The government has damaged after the tempest of Ophelia and has been more bad after the Cyclone Maria. The project has been financed by the Bank of the Caraibes with a $1.6 million and has been supposed to finish in November of this year. We have looked at this project called the Tropical Storm, the Cyclone Tropical Storm of Ophelia that has passed des trois années qui passaient déjà. Eh bien, ça c'est un projet. Nous t'es capable de tirer à aller à gauche là et puis à droite là. Eh bien, si nous partez venir là pour faire projet ça, nous qui perdis chimer ça. Nous n'ayons pas gardé quoi. Ça c'est un projet qui y a un million six mille dollars pour faire projet ça. Un projet ça c'est nous couper à terre. Nous mettez au gros mille là, parce que terre t'es qu'à descendre là. Eh bien, nous faisons all the places that you can see the water, the water, the layer, like the steps. And then we have a rigid pavement and a drain to descend to see what we can do. The mother of the malady is very happy to work with her. The mother of the malady is very happy to work with her. The mother of the malady is the one who did this. This is the officer of the civil marine. They said that the November of the year is passed, we can see what we can do. The mother of the malady is very important because we have a boiling lake, a fresh water lake, we have a macaque, a micro-train, 
mon am mon am mon am mon what toutes ces places ça mon Midland Falls yo ne peut pas passer là pour aller à ces places ça so pour tourism même nous besoin ces chimé ça si nous pas ni chimé ça nous est toujours perdu now Loda c'est une place qui est bien trop cool. I mean, tout le monde l'a dit qu'on peut entrer dans pour faire projet là, mais il n'est pas pli, il n'est pas comme la boucade des sangs. Donc il n'est pas, il n'est pas déjà aisé. Donc n'est-ce pas une place qui est bien aisé pour développer. Mais moi bien quand on a un complet projet, moi en novembre qui est venu avec nous, nous qui nous bon chemin, nous nous besoin faire ces bails ça, parce que si nous quittons ces bails ça, qu'a fait, bail là qui va faire la droite, droite et puis à gauche. En gauche, en gauche, en gauche, on est sur mon capalicot. Et avec nous, pas qu'il y a un chimé. Donc, ça nous a fait, c'est un beau pareil. Et mais nous, on a été baissé le chimé. Maria a passé dans d'autres blasts encore, mais c'est ce qu'on a fait. Et puis finalement, j'ai eu l'héritage qui a symbolisé le commencement de la semaine Créole à Dominique. Tous les années, il y a différents villages, ni opportunités là, pour nous, j'ai eu l'héritage là. La liste de trois villages ça là, qui a tapé à Tassion. Et puis, monde qui fait contribution à la culture, qui a tapé à la recognition pour contribution yo pour préserver culte pays là pour m'en parler ma pour constituer si grand temps honorable Ian Douglas grand temps c'est yon c'est place là qui bien résilient et puis il dit ça que moutre depuis en l'histoire c'est quand ça grand temps si il dit grand temps qui continue pour en legacy là pour aider bâti Dominique présent pour célébration là c'est président Dominique his excellency Charles Savre et puis Mrs Savre et puis même cabinet. L'année ça la division culte la télone Crawford Alexis Hot Guantans pour travailler la il a fait en culte à notre pays là. Alexis qui a joué accordion là pour 65 l'année qui a servi talent pour préserver culte Dominique et puis il a passé fou là pour numéro jeune moun, moun qui a engagé en équipe culturelle. Il te présenté et puis award li par président Dominique His Excellency Charles Savre. Crawford aussi tapé un award tabula et puis d'autres award recognition. Ça c'est tout pour nouvelle à Creole. Non, moi c'est Shakira Repair. Au revoir. Before we leave, please take note of this announcement. The Dominica Youth Business Trust announces its small business assistance facility which will run from December 11th to 13th, 2018. In this regard, applications are invited from young men and women aged 18 to 35 who are interested in developing their small businesses. Application forms can be obtained at the Dominica Youth Business Trust Office, 42 Kennedy Avenue, Youth Development Division on High Street, District Youth Development Officers or DYBT website, which is www.dybt.gov.dm. Application forms should reach the Dominica Youth Business Trust no later than Friday 9th, November 2018. The national flag of Dominica was designed by Mr. Orwin Bully. The flag of the Commonwealth of Dominica consists of a circular emblem of red bearing a Cicero parrot standing on a twig encircled by 10 lime green stars. This is superimposed on the three vertical and the three horizontal stripes of yellow, black, white, forming the triple colored cross against the general background of forest green. The central emblem represents the national bird of Dominica, also a symbol of flight towards greater heights and fulfillment of aspiration. The parrot also comes from the Dominica coat of arms, thus symbolizing the official seal of the country. We'll tell you more on Dominica's flag on our next edition of National Focus. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS on Facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica and follow us on Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I'm Priska Julian. Thanks for watching.